Welcome to Standard 4D, or at least the first part of Standard 4D. The goal of this standard is to help us describe something called the Columbian Exchange, including its impact on native populations. The essential question we hope to answer in this standard is what was the impact, what was the effect of this thing called the Columbian Exchange between European and indigenous cultures? And by indigenous we, we mean the original or native things in a particular area. So for this standard the indigenous cultures, the native cultures, will be those of the Native Americans. Okay, the essential understanding that will help us uh, in answering this question is, is that the arrival of the Europeans doesn't happen in isolation. The Europeans, as they arrive here uh, in North and South America, they're going to interact with the various Native American groups that they encounter. And that interaction is going to cause an exchange or a trade of products and resources between the two groups. In the picture here of the first Thanksgiving, we see the European woman and the Native American man, the exchange of food, presumably the exchange of language, possibly of religion. We see animals, we see different clothing, the Eastern and Western hemispheres are coming together as a result of the arrival of Europeans in the Americas. Our essential knowledge is kind of a big one for the course. The Columbian Exchange is an important uh, term for us to understand. Columbian referring to Columbus, who we see there on the left, and an exchange is a trade or a swap. Uh, the historiography of this term goes back to the early 1970s and a historian named Alfred Crosby who wrote a book called The Columbian Exchange in which he describes this exchange or trade of people, plants, animals, foods, diseases, in other words good things and bad things between the Eastern and Western Hemisphere that begin as a result of Columbus's arrival in the Americas. In other words, Columbus opened a door that hadn't been opened before between the Eastern and Western Hemispheres. And through that door ever since have passed people, plants, animals, foods, disease. Okay, Columbus's uh, arrival is often depicted in pictures like this. We can see from the moment Columbus arrives on the beach, we see an exchange of food as the, as the native peoples greet Columbus in this depiction. Uh, early on as they're trying to understand each other, you have a, a, an exchange of language. We see Columbus's crew in the background here putting up a cross, an exchange of religion, an exchange of technology with the ships and the weapons. They don't even realize that germs and disease are being passed back and forth in this picture. But that's all part of the Columbian exchange that Crosby describes. Okay, this exchange is going to affect Europe and the Americas differently. Going from west to east, going from the Americas back to Europe, largely positive. Okay, the agricultural products, things from farms like corn and the potato, are going to increase the health and the life expectancies of Europeans. Tobacco can go in as a negative for health, but all three of these products are going to cause Europeans to change the way they live. They change the lifestyle of the Europeans. And we'll take them one at a time here. We see uh, the potato where it began in South America and the Andes region uh, of Peru and Bolivia. Uh, and there it was one of the staple or the main crops of the Incas. By the time the Europeans arrived in the late 14, early 1500s, potatoes had spread to a large area of the Americas. We see in this illustration an example of the Columbian Exchange. Okay, the European is coming ashore from the boat. The Native American is presenting him with this Western Hemisphere food that's going to go back to Europe. 
Back in Europe, the potato is initially greeted with some skepticism. Uh, a lot of Europeans, especially upper class Europeans, refused to eat it, uh, largely because it grew underground. Okay? They didn't really trust foods that didn't grow above ground, and the, 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 uh, <laughs> the potato grew underground. Uh, we see in this uh, painting by the European artist Vincent van Gogh called The Potato Eaters, these are peasants, these are poor people eating potatoes. Uh, and again, just an example of how in art you wouldn't have Van Gogh painting Europeans eating potatoes 200 years earlier, 300 years earlier, because there were no potatoes in Europe to eat. It's really this guy who's uh, responsible for the widespread uh, acceptance and consumption of the potato. He's a French physician, a French doctor named Antoine Parmentier. And uh, he, um, he was actually a prisoner of war in Europe and was fed a lot of potatoes. When he was released, he set about trying to convince upper class people in France that the potatoes were safe to eat. For our uh, future chefs watching this, there's a style of potato today called uh, potatoes parmentier. I think they're fried in butter and usually meat is added to them. Uh, Parmentier actually has his own subway or metro station in Paris, complete with a statue of him passing out potatoes. And uh, if you're a fan of potato chips or french fries and you're ever in Paris, you can pay your respects to Parmentier at his gravesite by leaving a potato behind. Uh, we see here the French Queen Marie Antoinette who helped to popularize potatoes. She wore uh, potato flowers or the blossom from the potato in her hats. Uh, and even Shakespeare gets in on the potato. Here we see one of his famous characters, Falstaff, in the play The Merry Wives of Windsor, where Falstaff has a line where he says, Let it rain potatoes. Okay, and by this, he doesn't mean some freakish weather event. Potatoes were believed to have uh, certain romantic properties, and uh, that's what Falstaff is referring to in this line. But the idea here is that Shakespeare wouldn't have known what a potato was had he been alive 200 years earlier. There would have been no way he would have written that line if the Columbian Exchange hadn't brought potatoes uh, to Europe. Okay, so in general, the, the uh, effect of the potato in Europe is a, is a population increase, especially among the poor who now have a nutritious, uh, cheap, relatively easy to grow food that they could store for a long time as well. And so we see the population of Europe generally increase. One exception we could throw in here is Ireland. Uh, Ireland's population did increase quite a bit due to the potato, but by the mid-1800s the potato crop uh, uh, failed and the population had become so dependent on the potato as a source of food that the population actually declined uh, and dropped about half. About half the population of Ireland either starved to death or left the country for, for other countries. Okay, tobacco was another agricultural product that originated on this side of the world that changed European lifestyles. We see illustrations from early European settlers like the one on the right showing Native Americans using tobacco for medicinal and ceremonial purposes. It's really this guy, a French diplomat named Jean Nico, who is largely responsible for popularizing tobacco in Europe. He was the French ambassador to Portugal, and while serving in Portugal, he's introduced to tobacco, which he then brings back to the French royal family, the French king and queen, uh, who take a liking to it. In fact, it's Jean Nico that the word nicotine, the active ingredient, uh, the addictive uh, ingredient in tobacco takes its name from. Uh, tobacco gains in popularity. We see advertisements like the one on the left showing uh, in England 
a European guy on the left smoking tobacco, and again that close tie-in with the Native American, including a Native American in the ad, and lots of Virginia tobacco. We see a European gentleman on the right sitting around a table and smoking tobacco. Not everyone was thrilled about the tobacco though. Uh, we have songs like this one on the left from the early 1600s called Tobacco's But an Indian Weed that includes lines like uh, grows green and mourn and cut with need it shows our decay we are but clay think of this when you smoke tobacco not the cheeriest of lines but you can think of it almost like an early public service announcement against tobacco we also see here the English King James the first who disliked tobacco smoke so much that he actually uh, instituted some of the first smoking bans uh, and placed very heavy taxes on, on tobacco. Okay, the irony is that James I is the guy who uh, the Jamestown colony in Virginia, England's first permanent settlement in the Americas was named after, and Jamestown and Virginia become very big producers of tobacco. The other agricultural product mentioned is corn, and we see corn on the left depicted uh, in Central America where it originated. On the right we see the Aztec corn god, so important to the Aztec culture that uh, was corn, that they had a god for corn. You might be familiar with the stories of the pilgrims who were starving up in Massachusetts before the Native Americans taught them how to grow corn. And on the right is another example of art influenced by the Columbian Exchange, a European artist named Peter Bruegel. Uh, painted in the 1500s a painting called The Corn Harvest. Okay, again, you wouldn't have a painting in Europe uh, 200 years earlier showing Europeans planting corn because again there was no corn to plant. Corn was in the Western Hemisphere. The standards don't really mention it too much but it's really Africa. Corn has some influence in Europe but it really becomes a main food source and a staple crop in Africa. As we see here it's, it's honored on a postage stamp sold in Ghana just going to show the importance placed on corn in uh, some African cultures. The exchange is less favorable, less positive going from Europe to the Americas. On the positive side, we can say that Europeans brought horses and cattle, cattle being things like cows, which do improve or, or change uh, the lifestyle of, America, of the American Indians. That iconic image, the famous scenes of uh, Native Americans riding on horses, uh, they were, the Native Americans were around a long, long, long time without ever having set eyes on a horse. The horse was native to the Eastern Hemisphere. The Europeans' arrival brought the horse to the Native Americans and they quickly adapted to it. But uh, anytime you see a horse in a movie or a, or a TV show with a Native American, keep in mind, the horse was a relatively uh, new addition and a result of the Columbian Exchange. Unfortunately for the Native Americans, the Columbian Exchange really is largely negative, uh, and that's largely due to disease. And the disease, above all others, was smallpox that just ripped through the Native American population. They had no immunity to it. Uh, it killed very quickly, had a very high mortality rate. We see here in this uh, graph the population of Central uh, Mexico and Native Americans, which stood at about 25 million people in 1520, and 80 years later, by 1600, fallen to about a million. So we're looking at close to a 95% uh, decrease in population in just 80 years. Okay, so just to recap here, the Columbian Exchange, we have the two hemispheres now brought together. We see products from the Western Hemisphere like tobacco, potatoes, and corn sent from the Western Hemisphere to the Eastern Hemisphere. And we see products like cattle, 
horses, and unfortunately for the Native Americans, disease like smallpox sent from the Eastern Hemisphere to the Western Hemisphere. And that summarizes what we need to know for Standard 4D.